Hello. This is the big data course. So in this part of the course, we're going to focus on some technology we've already discussed, namely k-means clustering, with a little different angle in that we're actually going to be running some particular Python code to illustrate k-means in action, whereas previously we didn't actually discuss the detailed implementation. And of course, uh, k-means is just a particular data analytics, and so forms part of our motto of using clouds, running data analytics collaboratively, processing big data to solve problems in X informatics. All right, k-means in Python. Um, this can actually be done in multiple ways. We've used this book by Harrington in the past. However, although chapter 10 of this book has a good discussion of k-means with some interesting examples, we will not go through that in this, in this course, but rather use the built-in support of k-means in the SciPy package. And we will actually modify that software. Uh, here is a link to the uh, software. Uh, there, there are multiple uh, functions there. It's labeled VQ for vector quantization which is uh, one of the utilities that we actually use in the k-means um, application to associate points with clusters. And he, that I also give the uh, link to the documentation page for um, the uh, k-means algorithm. There are four files provided with this section. Um, the, the file uh, k-means extra dot py Actually, we don't run in this class, but it's useful there. It invokes the, the actual SciPy code. It calculates um, cluster, it does clustering based on the fake data, which fake data is actually used in a later file, parallel k-means.py, which generate four actual clusters of three different sizes, small, large, and very large. The file we will use um, is, uh, uses a modified k-means code with various enhancements to allow me to illustrate some points. Uh, those modifications include uh, map-produced parallelism, which we won't discuss immediately, but in a later lesson. And it uh, generates, every time you run it, eight plots by doing uh, clustering in, of, uh, of this data set into two, four, six, and eight clusters. We will demonstrate using this software in this, in this lesson. There's also another piece of code, which is the one we'll start with, xmean.py, which uses the um, SciPy built-in k-means, and it reads data from a CSV file, and it does a very simple clustering from a, a CMU class I found on the web. So this is the CMU example. We have 85 records. Uh, it's in a CSV, namely comma-separated file, and it, um, that file is available to you as a, as a resource. And we're trying to, um, it just lists uh, weight and height, and we're trying to divide it into various clusters, so we know roughly what the good sizes are to make for our t-shirts. And we, um, we can, um, this particular not totally general code can go from two to five clusters. Um, the k-means code will cluster into any number of clusters, but the um, plotting program only plots up to five clusters. So here's the type of thing you get if you run uh, this data, which is here plotted using matplotlib, of the weight, which is the uh, um, y-axis, and the height, which is the x-axis. You um, get a sort of linear, a broad linear um, uh, distribution. So it runs up here in a nice linear curve. Then if you are clustered into the two clusters, you get the small t-shirt here with this as the center, and the large t-shirt here with that as the center. If you then just rerun that with k of three, then you will get uh, the small, the large, and the very large, or whatever, however you want to label them. And uh, 
So that's uh, illustration of running it for two values of k. Um, let's just do that uh, for real. Um, so what do we do here? We better find the uh, the code, which is sitting here. Here's x mean dot uh, py, and you have to feed in the value of k, and the value of k is set to two here. Well, we showed you k equals two and three. Uh, let's do um, k of five to get something um, a little more uh, interesting. And we will uh, copy this code, control A, control C. And then we put it into our IPython window. Here it goes. And we get the answer. It's very quick, it's only 85 records. And it's not actually very big. Let's see if we can make it bigger. Here we are. Uh, the black squares are the centers, one, two, three, four, five. And then we have uh, green, blue, red, yellow, uh, maroon as the colors of the clusters. And so obviously we've taken this broad distribution and chopped it up into five components. And we could, uh, I already showed you k of two and four, uh, two, oh, sorry, two and three. In the on the slides, and you can obviously uh, let you run k equals four, and you can also modify the code to run larger values of k, or maybe you can find some more data to run and do something similar with. So this is uh, this is a really straightforward, run-of-the-mill, uh, basic use of k-means. Okay, let's go back to the uh, PowerPoint. Okay, so now we go to the case where we, um, which is well, actually a common thing to do when you're clustering. You want to, if you're trying to develop a nifty new clustering algorithm, it's good to know the answer. So um, we generate here four clusters. Each of them has 250 points. Uh, the 250 points have a bell-shaped distribution. Uh, which is the, the Gaussian distribution, which we already discussed at length in the physics part of the uh, physics Higgs particle analysis part of these uh, this course, and we fix the centers and the radii, with the radii being the standard deviation of these clusters. So the 250 points are randomly generated; they'll be different uh, each time you run the program, uh, because we remember Py Python. Uh, does not always use the same starting point. And we have four centers, basically the corners of a square of side three, starting at the origin and going up to the position three, three. And the basic uh, set of four clusters, which are called the large set, have radius is three eighth, 0 0.55, 0 0.6, and a quarter. And those, I say, are large. Then the larger two of these clusters are these two here. 0.55 and 0.6. Those two are at the top of uh, at, uh, y equals three. And there is no significance in the fact that the radii is slightly different. They're just what I thought of one day when I was writing the code. And we generate two other uh, cluster sets, the so-called small clusters, which have a radius which is exactly a quarter of this. And we have the very large clusters which have radiuses, which are 1.5 times these um, values here. Now let's remember what um, k means does. We have a set of points. We want to find a specified number, k clusters for those points. We choose a random starting point. So we choose, um, typically what you do when you have a set of points is you don't generate the uh, um, centers of ra randomly in the space. You just take actual k of the points, uh, leaving m minus k not to be centers and k to be centers. This at least ensures that uh, your centers have to be at least near one point, because they're exactly equal to one point. Then we iterate the uh, algorithm, 
where we associate points with the cluster. And that's what's done with the uh, with the utility VQ vector quantization. And then we calculate the new center positions as the centroid or the average of the points associated with each cluster and its center. And as I said, Python has a k-means code which we will use. And as the source is online, I gave you a link. Um, we can change that code uh, uh, for our own satisfaction. And we will do that to illustrate parallel computing in a later lesson. And here we will make a small modification to the uh, quality uh, criterion, quality of, of clustering criterion, which I call the goodness criterion. And here we write out the k means algorithm again. And um, it's, uh, <coughs> notice we have to do a carry, this is actually what's explicitly implemented. We do have to calculate the point center distances. This is called the distortion. We do have to delete zero size clusters, and we do have to check conversions. And another point about this slightly more detailed algorithm is we do an iteration over the starting positions for the uh, cluster centers. There is a parameter which in the default to 20 in the Python code for the number of such iterations. Um, we will actually run it uh, with different numbers for that, uh, that iteration, typically one, because we want to show what happens when you uh, <coughs> get trapped in the local minimum and you do not actually necessarily get the best solution. 